There have been a lot of conversations happening surrounding online child stars. Following Demi Lovato's documentary that came out in September, there have been more eyes on child social media stars and things that can be done to protect them in this industry. Social media is a growing space and there's hardly any protection set in place for children who are in online content. Other child stars such as Allison Stoner have come out to really fight to make sure that children are protected online and urging lawmakers to really take action here. We're going to talk about what's kind of being done right now to protect online social media stars that are children, stories that have come out from children who have grown up online and, and what they're doing to try and advocate for some sort of protection. We're also going to be talking about some influencers that have kind of gone at each other for exploiting their children and wondering if they are putting money aside into their children's accounts for the work that they are doing on their social medias. We're going to get into everything that is being said on the topic because it is truly so crazy. Over the years, we've really seen this rise in family content online. It certainly varies as there's parents who are influencers and sometimes share their child. And then there's those who make their child the star of their content. And without them in the videos or pictures, the audience wouldn't be as interested. And it's in those situations where people are really advocating for changes to protect children online and give them the ability to at least make sure they're compensated for their work and to possibly given the ability to get this content taken down later down the road if they so desire when they're older. There have been efforts to protect child stars on social media, but it's been slow in getting things to actually happen. In July, a new Illinois child influencer law went into effect and is the first of its kind that protects minors under 16 who appear in monetized social media content. It requires parents to set aside a percentage of the revenue earned from this content into a trust for the child. If a child appears in more than 30% of a creator's videos, they are entitled to compensation. The law also allows children to sue for their earnings if parents fail to comply. But this has only gone into effect in Illinois, and children who grew up being shared online are old enough to speak out on their experiences and are pushing for more protection. CNN shared the stories of several children who grew up online and are currently fighting to make this change. One girl, Cam Barrett, has spoken out about growing up as an online child star where her mother shared intimate details of her life, such as getting her first period and so much more online. And she is urging lawmakers to protect future children, calling for financial compensation for these children and their right to delete unwanted content when they become adults. Cam has spoken out sharing her testimony to Maryland lawmakers earlier this year onto TikTok. First, I just want to thank you, Mr. Chairman and ranking members of the committee for your time. My name is Cam Barrett, and I'm an international advocate who fights to end the exploitation of children on social media. As a former content kid myself, I know what it's like to grow up with a digital footprint I never asked for. As my mom posted to the world my first ever menstrual cycle, as she posted to the world the intimate details about me being adopted, her platform grew and I had no say in what was posted. When I was younger, there wasn't necessarily a source to monetize each post. However, there have always been brand deals. In exchange for content, my mom received free concert tickets from Live Nation resellers who viewed her posts. After I was hit by a drunk driver, her connection said they would pay for me to go to see artists like Demi Lovato or Taylor Swift in exchange for promotional posts. At that age, I became vigilantly hyper aware of my surroundings, developed an anxiety disorder I have to this day and dropped out of high school. That's when posing became a full-time job for me. As we know, social media has drastically changed over the past several years in a way where it's much more accessible for parents to turn their children into a quick source of income. In these situations, most blogger parents will pull their children out of school so they have more opportunities. Um, and I'll be the first to admit that it leads to a very quick burnout. As an adult, I'm still learning how to navigate this life with a digital footprint I can't remove. I've been diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder and an anxiety disorder that's so that, that is so debilitating, I'm unable to hold a job. Members of the committee, I plead with you to think about this generation of children who give their parents free labor to maintain a social media presence. Maryland has the opportunity to protect the child influencers who reside in this state from facing a monetized childhood only to be met with nothing in return at 18, along with having no say in a digital, in a digital footprint they never asked for. Thank you for your time and I'm open to any questions. Demi Lovato was also bringing attention to this in September during the release of her child star documentary, saying one of her goals in creating the documentary was to showcase what being a child star meant. And she also highlighted the need for legislative protections for young influencers and performers, emphasizing the fact that there is really hardly anything being done to protect these children online. There are 
dark sides of the industry. With this project, it I didn't want this to be an expose. I wanted it to be more of an informative experience for the viewer. Also understanding legislation that's trying to be passed right now for future um, generations of children that are working online already. So, and protecting, protecting and compensating them. Child star Allison Stoner has been a major advocate for child influencers. She's posted to her social media tons of videos trying to get people to understand this issue more. Okay, so kid influencers. The concern around labor laws and financial protection was wild to research because it falls into really complicated legal territory. So unlike child actors, who are hired by other production companies and who go to set to film, for kid influencers, most of the content production and influencing happens within the home space or alongside parent supervision, management, and command. The four-year-old isn't writing the skit or editing the video or typing the caption, OMG, I love my new rain boots, hashtag ad. Parents are probably running it. And BTW, the rain boots company that is hiring the four-year-old, has little way to fact check whether that child is in safe hands making that content or not. So parents could be raking in brand deals and making their child do things under their command and then pocketing the money. And it's all right now still considered legal and that family's right to raise their children how they choose. Just like child entertainers in Hollywood, kid influencers are at the mercy of each state making laws to protect them. Guess how many states don't have any laws for kid influencers? 49. Allison has also posted content showing ways she is trying to get lawmakers to understand the need for protections to be put in place. My name is Allison Stoner. I am an Ohio native and a former child entertainer. Today, I'm at the Ohio Capitol in Columbus to help introduce new legislation to protect kid influencers. I got there early felt at ease, and five minutes before the hearing, and realized I was actually in the wrong building. So Representative Grimm's aide came to the rescue. We ran to where the hearing was taking place. Representative McNally spoke first. Social media platforms are the new path for turning unregulated child labor into profits. And then Representative Grimm got into the details of the bill. Once a minor reaches the age of 18, they may request the removal of any vlog that includes their image or likeness. Then I gave short remarks. If you're not uh, trained in and in, in first in social media platforms, a lot of us are unaware of how many direct and indirect revenue streams exist and other people might be pocketing off of their content without them even being aware. Hopefully I was able to bring in some factors around the experience of fame, the mental health impacts and outcomes. I'm really grateful for the experience. And in the meantime, continuing to figure out ways to use today as a template um, to approach other states. So keep spreading the word. I'm excited to protect kids together. There's been so many cases of child stars in Hollywood getting taken advantage of by their parents to the point that they're left with nothing. As we've seen this year, child star Alana, also known as Honey Boo Boo, came out to say that her mom basically spent all her money that she's earned as she's grown up working and she could not afford to put herself through college because her mom spent all this money basically. And yes, there's certain things put into place like the Coogan account where part of a child star's earnings have to legally go into an account where parents can't touch it, but not all states actually implement that law and children still even with that law aren't always getting the full amount of money that they've earned as parents are only required to put in 15% of the earnings. So this is happening to kids in the mainstream child star world where there's some laws. Imagine what's going on with social media stars where there's literally nothing being done to really regulate except now, you know, in Illinois. And some parents have talked about the fact that they do set money aside for their kids if they're in their social media content, but not every parent is like that, unfortunately, and some really do need laws in place in order to get it together and set these earnings aside. And I know even then, some might not, but something needs to be done. It's better than nothing. Now, children don't even really need to be the star of the content for parents to be called out for exploiting them. A lot of influencers who 
end up having children will get brand deals for baby products and other child related items and they'll end up using their kids in these brand deals and it's kind of been a conversation now of you know is that kid getting some sort of compensation for being in this Huggies brand deal with their mom because if they were shooting a Huggies commercial and they were going to set that child would 100% have to be compensated for their work but with an Instagram ad being filmed at home you know is that parent taking it into consideration that their child being in the ad is a form of work that they should be compensated for? I mean, it is all so interesting how it's viewed. And this conversation was actually a whole drama in September as one TikToker, Bunny Hidea, called out The Bachelor's Nick Vile because he had accused her of exploiting her child online, but then he later did a diaper ad on Instagram with his daughter, so she was calling him out for it. Last year, Bunny had gone viral after posting an Instagram reel of her son who is obsessed with space. So that's kind of why she had him in this video. He's not really in her content a lot, but he was in this video. And he was reacting to one of the jokes that Matt Reif had made during his comedy special where he was kind of just ripping into girls that are into astrology when he said, I'm so tired of you ladies blaming your poor decision-making skills on planets that don't even know you. Your future is determined by your own thoughts, opinions, and actions. You are in complete control of how you're future turns out. It has nothing to do with the stars, man. Just because Jupiter has a ring and you don't doesn't mean that's what you're supposed to look up to for this magical advice. Now in the Instagram reel Bunny posted, her son is responding to Matt correcting his planet knowledge and made a dig at him being mean to girls. It's Saturn Astro rings and it has more also and you're mean to girls. Honestly, the video was harmless and innocent, but Matt's comment kind of made the whole thing go viral because he commented and said, Jupiter also has a ring. Oh, and Santa Claus isn't real. Your mom buys your presents with the money she makes on OF. Good luck. By the way, Bunny is not on OnlyFans, but Matt just said this for some reason. And the whole situation went viral because everyone was just like, I can't believe Matt Reif even commented this. And as the story was blowing up, Nick Vile covered it on his podcast and really ripped into Bunny, calling her out for explaining her son for clout. What the mom is doing, exploiting her son is disgusting. Clearly the mom used her son as a prop to be like, here, this would be cute. Say this in the comment about, and you hate girls or you're mean to girls or whatever. And she, she. Are you saying that she provoked the situation by putting him in? Well, she, kinda. she ex not kind of, she literally yeah. exploited her son by saying, hey, I'm going to use my six year old to pick a fight with a comedian. Yeah, probably not the best. Like, what did you think was <laughs> yeah. going to happen again? What that does not in any way excuse what, what Matt did. But I just think it's shameless to use your six-year-old in some sort of internet drama. Clearly, she fed him the line. She put him out there. And if you don't want your son to see Matt's comment, just make sure he's not on the internet. Bunny was shocked by his comments and even more shocked recently after seeing that a couple months later, now that Nick and his wife have a baby together, Nick is doing a diaper ad with his daughter on Instagram and she wanted to call him out for being hypocritical and address the fact that though her son isn't really in her content, she does set aside money for him if he is and goes through proper measures to make sure he is compensated and wondered if Nick was doing the same. Nick Vile is a vile human being and I have been silent on this for a very long time, but I'm going to be showing all the receipts and all the terrible things that he said about me that he's the one that actually does. I was really appalled by what Nick decided to say about me, share my name, share my image on his podcast. And now I'm going to add the clips here. They're only going to be pictures because what he said about me was so terrible that the sound was removed. So this woman says, my son made a joke about Jupiter and space. Then they tagged me in this video, added my name with my photo, agrees that my son is obsessed with space. And that's the reason that we posted this video. And Nick says, what this mom is doing is exploiting her son is disgusting. It's gross that she's exploiting her son for clout. And I think she deserves a lot of criticism for exposing her son. Well, let's talk about you, Nick. I never made money off that video. My son makes money off of my account. I send him payroll. He has his own savings account that I cannot touch. He has his own Fidelity account. He has his own VOO. He has his own uh, Roth IRA, all of which have thousands and thousands of dollars in them for when he's older that I am not allowed to touch. See, at the time, you didn't have a child. And now you do. And what's the first thing you do after you have a child? Oh, that's right exploitation let's look up the definition of exploitation the act of making use and benefiting from resources so you make a huggies ad 
right after your child's born. You probably had this in the works before you even had a child. Along with continuing to have guests on your podcast that actually have their entire content revolved around their children, but yet I post one video and I'm the one exploiting him. Now this is my son's saving account, which has thousands of dollars in it, that he gets paid weekly from me through payroll, which I am not allowed to touch this account. My name is not on this account. Now, this is a transfer to minors. This is the stock market that my son also has all of his money in, thousands of dollars. I think all parents that show their children online, whether it's a lot or a little, need to pay their children in an account that they cannot touch. So what I am here to say, Nick Vile, I need you to post proof that you have opened an account for your child with the amount that Huggies paid you to your account for your child that you cannot touch. And this needs to be backdated before this video. So please show evidence of that. And if you cannot, I think I deserve a very loud public apology. I just feel like this is why we need laws set in place so we don't have to question whether or not parents are setting this money aside. We should just know that they are because they have to. Maybe it will even have some less inclined to post with their kids. Who knows? I think people could agree on that even being for the best, especially with the way people have overshared about their kids. I mean, truly some embarrassing stuff has been posted, but hopefully changes come soon as child stars continue to advocate for those growing up online. But that is what has been said and done as of right now. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. We've covered family channels. For a long while now, we've seen a lot of things that have come out about them. So let me know your thoughts on the things being done to try and set protections in place. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye guys.